Hmm. You see, I just shot a iMac review, a very technical review for the past 16 minutes. And just as I got to the end of that video, I said something that made my brain pop. And I thought, that's, that's not the review I want to do. That's not the message I want to convey. So I'm contemplating reshooting this entire thing. You know what? Let's just do it. Let's just do it. I brought all this stuff out and I was trying to explain some stuff, but th these will all, these will all work, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can talk about this. Okay. Let's talk about this from the beginning. Uh, okay. Because of the current climate of coronavirus and the world being, you know, all about isolation and stuff right now, the way that press briefings are done with tech is a little bit different. Usually, you know, there's events and stuff like that, but right now there are no events. Companies are sending out products and they do these online press briefings. Usually companies are awful at them. They're super boring and everyone falls asleep. But Apple, because they're Apple, they do things a little bit differently. And when they sent this device over last week, uh, the press briefing that came along with it was a little bit different. It was an hour long. I'm not sure if I'm even permitted to talk about this stuff, but let's just roll with this. Uh, for that hour long briefing, the first 10, 15 minutes, they talked about the product, what's new, what's changed. And it was interesting for what it's worth. But then the rest of that hour, was really interesting. They brought on these creators, these people that had used a 27 inch iMac or iMacs of sorts to create stuff. Some were musicians, some were coders, like developers, some were uh, video makers. And it was, it was really moving for me. Like I, I remember last week, right after the event, I felt like it felt it awoke something in me because it had reminded me of why I started creating. It had reminded me of how I felt when I first started making anything creative in my life. And you know what? Let's just, let's get into it. Story time. Seven or eight years ago, I had this really weird idea to make a game, a 2D game. And I wanted to make a game, put it on the Apple store and sell it and make money. That was this stupid idea of mine. I had this game in my brain that I thought would look really cool when it came out. The idea was that you would have these creatures that you would inject with this touch based syringe and you would inject them and they would burst or sometimes they would do different things. And I thought the idea was so cool. I knew nothing about coding at the time, right? I needed a, a Mac. I didn't own any Apple hardware back then. I used Windows stuff and I, but I needed a MacBook or some kind of Mac device to be able to code in Xcode so I could make the game and then upload it to Apple servers. I picked up this machine. It was a used 2011 MacBook Air. And I still have, and I keep it around because it's like this memento of, you know, it's a, it's a reminder of, of creation of Dave, don't take your job so seriously. You can make things. That's what I did with this thing. I made a game it was called inject. It took me two years. Every day I'd go to work, come back from work and I'd work on it till really late at night. And two, years and a bit later, I published the game on the app store. It did horribly. It was a $2 game. I sold like 2000 copies for two years of work. It was not a financially great endeavor. However, it felt awesome. I had made something and shared it with the world. And it felt so cool. Like the game itself was trash. I'm not going to lie, but it felt really nice to make something. And then I felt like I was bit by this bug, by this, creative bug because like a year later I had this weird idea to start a YouTube channel. This was at the end of 2014. And I remember asking one of my friends at the time, he was 14 at the time. His name was Dylan. I said, Hey Dylan, I'm thinking of starting a YouTube channel, but I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared of what people might think. I'm scared of what people might think of me. What if a friend of mine or a relative of mine sees my video and thinks it's stupid. I'm talking about these nerdy technical tech things. And his answer to me was like, why do you care? Why do you care what other people think? If you want to make something, just make it, just do it. Cause you're going to, that's why you want to do it. And I thought to myself, wow, this 14 year old kid just schooled me. He just taught me something really valuable. And I feel like his response is seared in my brain. If you want to make something, just do it because you want to make it. So I bought a used 
15 inch MacBook Pro and I borrowed a camera from a friend and I learned how to use that camera and learned how to edit videos and I started my channel. Now, why am I talking about this stuff? Why am I telling these dumb stories that have nothing to do with iMacs, nothing to do with anything that's on the table here? Let me tell you why. One of the main questions people have right now when it comes to purchasing this new 2020 iMac is, do you buy one now or do you wait for the upcoming refresh of it? Because this is aesthetically dated hardware. It's not new, right? We've seen these thick bezels for years. We've seen this exact same design for many years. And as hardware enthusiasts, this stuff is not super interesting, right? This stuff is supposed to be coming up very soon. Apple's new Apple Silicon. Uh, this is the developer's kit. It's gonna have Apple Silicon inside an iMac type device soon. Maybe the end of this year, maybe next year. And the question is, do you get it now? Do you buy this thing now with this Intel old hardware? Or do you get this? Or sorry, do you wait for this to go into here? And the video I shot just previously, 20 minutes ago, I was trying to look at this objectively because there's a lot of moving parts, right? It's like, how do you, how do you disseminate the information so that you, you guys can make a good purchase decision of whether or not you should buy this thing now? And here's the thing. It seemed like a difficult question 20 minutes ago, but then I realized it's actually a really simple answer. A really simple answer. If you wanna make something, if you wanna do something, this is just a tool. It's just a tool. If I'd waited for the next iMac when I picked up the first piece of hardware to make my game or to start my YouTube channel, who knows? Maybe I never would've even done any of this stuff. But if you wanna make something, you just do it. Obviously, you don't have to buy, you know, a thirteen or fourteen hundred dollar iMac. But if you need a tool because you want to create something or you need to create something, don't wait for the next best thing. Just pick up the tool that's available today and use it to make stuff starting today. That's the message I'm trying to say. Because if I'd waited for like the next piece of hardware, who knows? I'm, who, I may never, never even started my YouTube channel. Um, I'll give you the two minute review of this device though. It gets up to ten cores. There's a few things I want to talk about. Uh, the performance is good. It's as you would expect. It's not going to be as cost effective as a Windows PC, but it's got 10 cores and a decent GPU. It pushes out good performance. There's four or five things that I think you should be aware of in case you were interested in actually picking something like this up. Number one, I guess sound profile. So iMacs have always had a very quiet audio signature. It's not new to this iMac. It's something they've always had, uh, but it's something that's very difficult and expensive to duplicate with a Windows machine, right? This is very quiet. So if you value that stuff, iMacs deliver that. Number two, there's a nano coating option this year that reduces glare. It's cool tech. And if you're in an environment where you're constantly looking at reflections on your screen and they bother you, I would get it. But for, I think for most people, not just to save the $500, but the image isn't as nice when you have that coating on, at least to me. So I would say if you can skip it, skip it. Uh, number three still has upgradable RAM, which is awesome. And number four, oh, new mics. I was gonna record this whole thing on the mics on here. They've improved significantly. Like they're so much better than basically any all-in-one system out there, but they're not amazing. They're no, they don't sound like this kind of mic. So they're good, they've improved, they're not the best. Um, and the webcam, the webcam's really good. Like it's sharp 1080p with nice facial toning. So if that stuff's important to you, this webcam will probably do the trick. But the rest of the device hasn't really changed much, right? It's still that thicker bezeled 27 inch device that is quite frankly starting to show its age. But here's the other thing. After that press briefing, it was a really nice one. If Apple, you're watching this, it was really good. But the question that popped in my mind was like, why? Why would Apple go through so much energy and effort on an iMac refresh? And I think the reason why they did that kind of briefing where they brought on these creators and they showcased what you could do with this stuff is because they knew that this would be a difficult product to sell. They knew that this last Intel iMac would be a harder sell because it's just such dated hardware, like aesthetically, right? This doesn't look new. And I think that's always been one of the big appeals of Apple's products that they look cool. This doesn't look cool anymore because it's so old. So I think that's why the press briefing went the way that it did. But the reality is this iMac will let you make really good stuff right now. So don't waste your mind space worrying about the next one. You just get the tool 
and get the job done because you never know, you might land on something that you love like I did with YouTube.